All right, I'm back. Let's do this. Oh, yeah, I found the series, by the way, if you didn't see the link posted. It's called Hoax Hunters. It's published by Image Comics. Uh, yeah, it's got a crazy, scary astronaut who's inhabited by, raisin, by ravens. <laughs> Something to do with zero point energy black holes. Yeah. Just a cool character overall. Hmm. Interesting. Sorry. Cool. Close all that stuff. So, let's start brainstorming number three. Brainstorming. Brainstorming 2 more than the first. Brainstorming 3, The Fusion. Sounds like bad movie titles. <laughs> but it is what it is. Okay. So... What kind of story do we want to tell? We've talked a lot about sort of weird brainstorming for son of brainstorming. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey Sam, is it cool if I read this on stream? Because I kind of want to. <laughs> but I'll ask your permission first. Dun, dun, dun. Oh yeah, absolutely cool. Okay, we're going to do it. Oh, if you're not following Burial at Sea, you should be, because uh, that's where you're going to find all of the info on uh, rewrite stuff and uh, the ridiculous two-score tales of our D&D &D adventures, me, Sam, and, and a few of our buddies. But yeah, um, let's read this. Dark Whispers. Hey, Sam, you didn't change the font yet. I'm disappointed. When I first laid eyes on him, I could hear the armor plates of his suit clank and grind together. The sounds rang clear in my mind, even with the vacuum of orbit clawing at us both. He hung there, a black outline against a black background. It took an eternity for me to toggle my radio and issue the standard warning. Unidentified spacewalker, you are entering a restricted volume. Remove yourself or you will be removed. I felt like someone else was speaking. I raised my gloved hand to point, more aware than ever of the thin film separating my flesh from the void. Even the hiss of the radio seemed to whisper faint threats, violence attu att attenuated across the billions of years between here and the Big Bang. He was much closer now, and I could smell the stour sour stench of my sweat. It boiled up into my helmet, forcing its way into my nostrils. I tried to focus. He was closer again, not seeming to traverse the distance between points, I, but simply blinking between them, 
My radio blared and a voice clawed its way into my skull. How are you here? How did you get into my home? That's cool. I like it. I would... Well, was there is there a restriction on uh, on how many words you're allowed for those, Sam? around 200 is 201 okay because i was gonna say uh i would have liked to have you well i would have really liked it if you had played up that sort of weird anticipation more but if you don't have uh like a lot of space then you can't really do it like this third paragraph i feel like could have been two or three paragraphs and would have been really good yeah, it's good. I like it. Cool. So, so the one thing that I'm very interested in exploring with this piece is that The idea of a science fiction fantasy horror mashup really really appeals to me. Um, I like that idea. And when I was looking at this, when we look at stuff like The Strain, for example, I think The Strain is a good example for what we're talking about. The Strain is a vampire story, but it deals a lot with folklore and magic, so fantasy elements, but also science fiction in terms of like weird disease outbreak elements. So in a lot of ways, The Strain is kind of a sci-fi fantasy horror mashup, right? So there's that. But how do you get those elements? Like what what elements of fantasy blend really well with elements of science fiction? A good example could be uh, Star Wars. Star Wars as a space opera is very much based in a fantasy world. You know, they use swords and guns and spears and all kinds of other things, you know. They ride horses as well as spaceships. Obi-Wan Kenobi is Gandalf. It is what it is. <laughs> I love Star Wars. But my point is, is that it's very much a blend of fantasy sci-fi. Not so much the horror elements, but fantasy sci-fi. I think in terms of what it is, horror is the easiest element to blend. Because horror can apply itself to any genre. Uh, I think of things like Gravity, right? Gravity is kind of a horror film. <laughs> it won't market itself necessarily as a horror film, but it is a horror film. Uh, what else am I thinking about? Um, you know, things like... Uh, God, what's that? Dead Space, for example. Horror horror sci-fi. Very apparent. Um, horror fantasy is not done a ton. But, I mean, if you think about H.P. Lovecraft, that could very much be horror fantasy. Um, I guess horror fantasy as like in high fantasy horror is not done a ton. So that could be interesting to explore.
Oh, you know what might be a really cool piece to do, Sam? I could write... Oh, this might actually be really, really cool. I should write a story, a short story that would would tell the story. Oh, man, that's too many stories. I should write a story version of the old runes. <laughs> I could write, but I could just sit here and talk. That'd be fun too. Because it would be perfect. Like, I'm just thinking about it. Like, um... It's a... Post-apocalyptic... Fantasy. Yeah, exactly. Like, something... Exactly what I'm thinking. Like something like you would include as like a promo, or like in the the f the first chapter of the book. Like after the introduction, there would just be like this piece, and it would be, you know, whatever. But this does exactly what we're kind of talking about because you know we got a post-apocalyptic fantasy, so it's fantasy with heavily science fiction and modern day tech elements and weirdness. Um, the, again, like I was saying, the horror can easily be added. If we want to do horror, we don't have to do horror. Um, I'm not saying we have to. I'm just kind of trying to challenge myself. Uh, but I think the horror in it can be really cool because we can do this thing where, you know, they're dungeon delvers. So they're deep underground. And I'm going to open up a second window here and I'm going to put this one to brainstorming one. Darkness. We have that exploration of the unknown. Oh, I'm going to lock this. So we have mazes, labyrinths. I spell labyrinths correctly, yay. Isolation. It's not something I have discussed too much in the old ruins itself, but I could see that society might set the cartographers apart. Um, let's say that what happens in the dungeon stays in the dungeon. The explorers don't necessarily talk about what's down there.
So, we, you know, due to the nature of this dungeon, we got easily got, um, secret places, strange places. Beauty, death, dreams. So that's more, uh, that's more up here in this kind of like dreams. For the king and the cartographers. Yeah. All right. I'm liking this idea. I'm liking this idea a lot. So for those who don't know, um, I'll open up the file here actually, might as well. Oh, where did I put it? I guess it's still over here. Got it. Okay. This is the old ruins. Uh, the old ruins is an RPG I designed. Uh, it's not a very good RPG. It's an RPG I designed for a uh, one week, or is it two weeks? A two week design competition called Game Chef. No, it's a one week. That's that's what it is. It's definitely one week. Nine days <laughs> is what it is. So yeah, um, it's something I designed. It's not very good. It's not done. This cover is drawn. This cover was drawn and illustrated by the lovely Drani, who you can find at Twitch.tv Drani. There we go. There's the link. So yeah, um, it's kind of this weird, cool, post-apocalyptic fantasy sort of style game. It's all about technology, specifically map making. But I think that it would really, really translate itself well to this kind of thing, to what we're trying to do here. So let's plan it. Let's plan this story. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Now that I think about it. Um, I'm not sure if I want to write the story on stream. I definitely want to plan it on stream. That's going to happen. Like right now, it's going to happen. But I'm not sure I want to write the story on stream. The reason for that is that when I write something on stream, I'm kind of obligated to put it on my website, to put a draft of it on my website. It's kind of the point of Accidental Origin. And I don't want to break that point by not putting something on the website. Don't think it works very well. <laughs> but if I put it on the website, then any, if I wanted to get it published, 
in a magazine or something like that, it would have to be a reprint. And not a ton of magazines take reprints. So it drastically reduces your marketability of it. For example, Apex, which is kind of the, the magazine that we're designing this for, does not take reprints. They just don't. Well, actually, that's not entirely true. They do take reprints, but they only take solicited imprints, uh, reprints. So they wouldn't actually, like I couldn't put it on my website and then have them ask me to reprint it unless they somehow found my website and whatever. <laughs> Which, you know, it's not impossible. It can happen, but unlikely. And considering how strong of an idea I think this story is, it might be better to not do it on stream so that I can actually get it published. But I don't know, chat. I'd like to know what you think. Um, so this is something I've been discussing with my friend Stevie, Stevie Ray Drawn, uh, who's a comic book artist and illustrator. about you know like sort of that 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 idea of publishing right like it's self-publishing is totally a thing i could theoretically self-publish it much like i was planning on doing with fear the siren before i made it a comic book where you know i could i could publish it on my website and then publish it on amazon sort of thing as an as an in short ebook that is something i could do so there is that i don't know but i'd like to know what you guys think For example, if you guys really want to see the writing of it on stream, then I will do it. <laughs> and I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to do it on streams, especially because I did all of the design work or the vast majority of the design work for the old ruins on stream. Oh, if anyone wants this PDF, it is on my website. You are allowed to make exceptions. What would be the exception, Sam? not posting it on my site. The only issue is though that, and again, I'd have to look at it more. It gets really complicated, but if the video of me writing it is on my site and on my YouTube, then, do, then does that count as it being published? Dun, dun, dun. Welcome to the business of being a writer and publishing rights. Publishing rights are great. Just looking at a contract here. 
The nice thing about Apex is they actually put their contract on the website, which is sweet. It's good to read it. <laughs> um, and you should. You should read contracts and stuff like that. You should get to know the what people are talking about, what the language people are using when they talk about writing. But you should write something. Yes. Thanks, Sam. Thanks for reminding me. What I could do is I could write, I could start it and then do the rest off stream. And that probably wouldn't count because it wouldn't be more than like a publishing blurb basically. I don't know. I'll have to do a lot more research on that too. I've read a few things about it, about what constitutes as first rights and what doesn't and all that stuff. Um, but if anyone has any links that they want to shoot me across, uh, you could link me on Twitter or uh, there's an email on the website there for you to contact me. I'd like to see some links on it where we could kind of learn about uh, yeah, those rights, right? Like what what is what? How does it all work? Okay, so let's unlock this. Okay, so the old ruins, I'm going to move this over to my other screen. Uh, whoa, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Just copy some stuff across from the old runes. All right. So our character is a cartographer. Who is he? What is his name? What do we do here? What is our plot? I know of a couple of scenes I think would be good to write. Uh, for example, Yeah, for example, Hank. I'm not calling him Hank. Why do you want to call everyone Hank? <laughs> Jim Bob Explorer, man. 
I mean, it has a better shot than Hank, but... Okay. <laughs> I mean, the Explorer Man part is actually not a terrible idea. Um, what did I call the city? The place where they're from is called uh, Pitfield. <laughs> trying to think like would we have creatures would there be weird creatures down in down there probably There must be. There's got to be. Just pulling some of the elements from what I'm doing. So, in medias res. In medias res. Characters, characters, characters. What other characters do we want? Um, there'll definitely be at least two or three other explorers. Sorry, I call them Explorer A, Explorer B, Explorer C for now. And then um, there's uh, Pitfield Guards. And Villagers, I guess. Okay, plot. So we're gonna start it with MC Explorer Man being down in the in the dungeon.
then the second scene is going to be a flashback. <laughs> Ganymede Everborn. Sure. Is that is that an actual character or is that just something? That's Dr. Explorerman, thank you. <laughs> Didn't go to Dungeon College for eight years to have everyone ignore my title. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Jason Neo Satellite. I like that too. I'm gonna write those down. Andrew Funk music. All right, I'm down. I agree, I think it's a good name. You guys can keep going with those, by the way. I will totally write them down as guards and or villagers. <laughs> For later. I don't know if those will actually be characters, but just, you know, I'll have a whole thing. I kind of like the idea of using doctor like a, no, a, a noble title. Is it supposed to be lowercase? I'll leave it lowercase if it's supposed to be lowercase. Okay, cool, I got it. Uh, flashback. Uh, the king sends out a decree. Jimmy, not a bad guy? Done. I'm so down with that, that's fine. Um, what was I thinking? So yeah, the king sends out a decree. That's a flashback. So in the uh, Boku no Academia manga, which I really like, it's about superheroes and stuff, there's a guy named uh, Tetsu 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 Tetsu. <laughs> and 
and I kind of just want to go like Dave, 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 Dave. I also want to have a character. Uh, I also want to have a character named Billy Bob Robert Williams. <laughs> what? That's funny. But uh, I was thinking there should be a game. Uh, there should be a guy who's like, uh, I need a good first name. What should I use? He has four first names. It's also funny though, because it's like Billy is short for, is like a short form of William and Bob is a short form of Robert, right? Yeah, exactly. I was thinking Douglas, no last name. <laughs> well, he's more he's more of a villager. Oh, that's funny. That makes me laugh. King sends out a decree. Flashback, MC. False, false back, flashback. MC gets his start as a cartographer. Yeah, you told me that story, Sam. Jerry Blank. Yeah, totally stands for Michael Conrad and not main character. Not at all.
The interesting thing is in this weird post-apocalyptic society, I'm thinking of making like a bunch of these characters uh, female. Like for example, I think I kind of want like either Gilbert or Theodore to be a woman. <laughs> And I kind of want Andrew Funk Music to be a woman. You know, mix it up, do some different things. So what creature do we want here? In the original text, I have orcs, trolls, goblins, ghouls, vampires, and mutants. But it doesn't have to be those. It could be something else. Mutant might be interesting because it kind of gives it that edge. Ordinary supporter. <laughs> I'm I'm cool with whatever, man. I'm just writing them down as possible as possible names, you know. I can't guarantee that they'll make the story, but you never know. It also is good to do just because it's like then it's you start getting a really good feel for like what the story kind of f like what the story feels like, you know, like the name Jason Neo Neo Satellite in a weird fantasy world and stuff like that, like really points out the oddness you know andrew funk music that's such a good name <laughs> andrew funk music i loved it gilbert's that stab demand is really good too i like that one Yeah, exactly. Like it's 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 like that just like just different enough. But they're not like nicknames either, right? Like they're they're kind of just the, the weird way that language works over time when part of it's been destroyed. Sam, Bob just sent me a YouTube video and I don't I don't know if I should watch it. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Nope, not watching that on stream. What a guy. What a guy. <laughs> so 
So every paragraph here is going to be a new scene, basically, of our plot. Just kind of brainstorming some stuff out. What other stuff? So we've done enemies, creatures, kind of did the bodies upon bodies, kind of did trap rooms. <laughs> at some point later on in the future MC is going to find a piece of technology it's going to be too big for him to move in syntax <laughs> that's so good that's so good This is kind of where I want him to get jumped. So Sam, what do we think about a cartography school? Is that a thing or are they just kind of making it up as they go? Like what's... got to be a guild yeah I, I kind of agree so I think we want to do like a flashback guild here then secret handshake they might Let's go right after two. I'm gonna take a five minute break and then uh, I'm gonna come back and work on this for another 40 minutes or so. Um, I'm really liking the direction it's taking. I feel like it's starting to get really fleshed out. <laughs> yes, yes.
Okay, cool. All good. Yeah, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a short break, only five minutes, and uh, then we'll be back. Yeah, I'm really liking the direction this is going. I disagree. You don't need pants. It's fine. No one cares if you wear pants. <laughs> <laughs> 